first at four temperatures incredibly frigid this morning, but we're putting it in the rearview mirror as the next thing on our weather menu is snow. We'll look at how much to expect. Karen. All right, Ben, also first at four, one of the most powerful voices in conservative politics has been silenced. We're going to remember a legend in the broadcasting industry. And here's Paul. We have one of those power of children stories that will make you smile. I just knew I needed to help in some way. See how these two 11 year olds are helping a local hospital fight COVID-19. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and click on Detroit. Local 4 News first at 4 starts now. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew looking at that live look outside. You might call it the calm and the cold between the storms. Temperatures struggling to hit 20 degrees right now. Ben Bailey is already preparing us for a little bit more snow. So here is the first look in the first forecast. Hey, Ben. Oh, Karen, you just have to giggle at it sometimes because it's just so comical. We have the big snow and then we've got the incredible cold and then we've got even more snow. Uh, if there are kids in the room, you may want to hide their eyes. These are the temperatures that we saw this morning. 23 below. That's the actual air temperature in Lapeer this morning. Officially, we were at five below, so an incredible move there between the zero, which was actually the warm spot in the city, and 23 below, which was in Lapeer. Now, current temperatures, uh, well, they look a whole lot better. We're looking at 19 right now, and even some 20s in some of those areas that were much colder up there to the north of us. We do have snow on the way. In fact, on uh, Storm Tracker 4, you can see there are some returns in northern Indiana. That stuff is trying to dry out. I don't think that we'll really see any accumulating snow until really the second half of tomorrow. But temperatures look a whole lot better. We'll wake up to 14 in the morning, 26 on the high side. This will be all snow and we will be shoveling. So we'll talk totals and some much warmer temperatures beyond in a few minutes. Karen. All right, thank you very much, Ben. In other news, millions of listeners are remembering a powerful conservative voice. Radio host Rush Limbaugh has died. He actually started in the business as a DJ, spinning top 40 hits, but eventually found his calling speaking out for the country's conservatives. The show was broadcast on nearly 600 radio stations in the United States. He was brash, opinionated, and often ran into controversy, but his followers, dubbed Ditto Heads, were so loyal. Limbaugh was battling lung cancer and talked about not having much more time. He was 70 years old. Closer to home, investigators believe a stove being used to provide heat is to blame for an apartment fire in Detroit. It happened around 3.30 this morning on East 7 Mile near Outer Drive. Three people, including a two-year-old girl, are being treated for smoke inhalation this afternoon. We're told arrangements are being made to find other units for those who are displaced. Residents say they've been complaining about a lack of heat. New at 5, we're going to take a look into why it hasn't been fixed and what happens next. DTE Energy is answering the call to help restore power following severe weather in the south. About 60 linemen and other support staff hit the road this morning for Ashland, Kentucky. A third of the customers in eastern Kentucky are without power after being hit with multiple rounds of severe weather. These crews will help repair downed wires and broken poles. All the utilities get together when we have storms and we go help one another. So it's our turn to go help them. Um, Fortunately, we didn't get hit like the other states, and we're going to go help them um, restore their customers. We're told the workers could stay in Kentucky for about a week to 10 days. Meantime, while Michigan crews head to Kentucky, there's also a, still a massive power problem in the state of Texas. More than 3 million homes and businesses remain in the dark, and there's no firm timetable for when it will return. Those in charge of the power grid say... Even when the power starts coming back, there will be rotating outages to prevent an all-out collapse. New nasty weather threatening several states. You can already see fresh snow hitting a Little Rock, Arkansas. That city could get another six inches on top of the nine inches that fell Sunday. Right now, about 100 million people live in areas with weather warnings, watches, or advisories. So far, the winter storm is blamed for at least 20 deaths across the country. Now, we've seen truckers getting stuck on icy Interstate 20 over in Vicksburg, Mississippi. One woman cooked 65 meals in her own home to help warm them up. The state's top medical executive continues to see some encouraging signs in Michigan's response to the coronavirus. Today, the state reported 939 new cases of COVID-19 in the past 24 hours. It's also reporting an additional 11 deaths. For some context, Dr. Janae Caldoun says case rates 
have declined 85 percent since the mid-November peak. Also, Governor Whitmer says Michigan ranks ninth in the nation for vaccine administration. A FEMA disaster team has been deployed to Michigan to help expand its vaccine efforts. Still, many of you are anxiously awaiting your turn. Caldoun thanks you for your patience and has this message. We and our local health departments, our hospitals, and other partners thank you for your patience. We will all keep working around the clock until everyone who wants a vaccine is able to get one. So until then, to protect others who are not yet vaccinated, and even after you receive yours, wear your mask, socially distance, and wash your hands. There's hope ahead, but it's critical that we all remain vigilant as we work together to end this pandemic. Governor Whitmer also talked about the $5 billion in federal COVID relief money that needs to be approved for spending here in Michigan. New at five, the rift between the governor and Republican lawmakers that's holding up that money. Rob Maloney will take a look at where things stand. Well, President Joe Biden is paying a visit to Michigan tomorrow. He will tour Pfizer's manufacturing plant over in Portage in western Michigan. The president will meet some of the workers who are producing the COVID-19 vaccine. And we're following that visit on Local 4 and ClickOnDetroit.com. All right, now the story of some special helping hands belonging to these two girls over in Ann Arbor. They've been best friends since kindergarten and have grown up figuring out ways to help others. So when they saw news reports of healthcare workers in need during COVID, they wanted to help. Our Paula Tutman shows us how the two sixth graders have jumped into action. You gotta get a big bowl. Big fancy bowl. Big bowl. Big bowl. On the outside, they seem like typical 11 year old girls filled with light and fun and laughter. But a deeper conversation with Mabry and Stella, and within moments, you get that these Ann Arbor preteens are enlightened and engaged. When I was um, spending a lot of time like watching the news. It was mid-July or early July, mm -hmm. and Detroit was getting hit pretty hard with COVID. Healthcare workers were struggling to get the personal protection equipment they needed. I actually did a story on a teacher who was making PPE out of plastic tablecloths to protect her fiance, who was a nurse. Stella and Mabry took it all in, not as 11-year-olds, but as humans. They should be able to just go into work with the gear they need to do their job. And they decided to raise money to help Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit's COVID emergency relief effort. This time we have peanut butter dog treats, brownies. Now these two girls are already experienced fundraisers, helping their local Humane Society last year. And they took that branding know-how and that 11-year-old can-do spirit and have made fundraising their superpower. They have a website. They sell paintings, soap, and other handmade, homemade items. They've sponsored contests. They've used their imaginations to create ways to raise money. This year, we moved to online fundraisers. That was mainly because of COVID, mm -hmm. and we just thought it would be safer. The girls contacted Henry Ford Health System to say, we have your back. As a health system, Henry Ford Health System doesn't turn any patient away. Um, we typically, in a given year, will have about $450 million in uncompensated care. Um, and this comes from us taking care of folks who don't have insurance. The margin in health care is about 2%. So, you know, fundraising can really establish the difference between good and great. When you raise money for somebody else, it just it feels really good. It feels like you're being a really good person. It feels good to know you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. So thus far, the girls have raised about $1,400, but this really isn't about the how much. It really is about the how can. How can you do a lot, even by helping just a little? Paula Tutman, Local 4. Stella and Mabry are still actively fundraising with their Helping Hands organization by selling a variety of products on their website. And we're going to put a link on our website and our social media platforms so you can check them out. Well, still ahead here first at four, the battle over carry on bags. How one airline is changing the rules to make more room, but only for some passengers. Uh Oh, we'll explain. Also, a member of the British royal family is in the hospital. What Buckingham Palace is saying about Prince Philip's condition this hour 
and COVID safety and retaliation. Why Amazon is being targeted over its treatment of employees. Stick around for trending stories first at four.